Welcome back. If you're just joining us, I am joined by Vanessa Late, the organizer for the South Carolina chapter of the Lyme Disease Support Group. 2014, Vanessa was diagnosed with Lyme disease and in 2015 was diagnosed with chronic Lyme disease after it had gone untreated for so many years. We're now going to talk about the wonderful things that have stemmed from this of unfortunate turn of events, but as we all know, God has a plan. And he, I, I just in listening to your story, I know he's in the first stages of that plan. So talk to us a little bit about, after coming here to South Carolina, how did things begin to unravel, as I would say, unfold and just go into a better direction, bringing some hope? Well, um, I moved here in July of 2015 after the doctor said, you're okay to move, we can't mm -hmm. figure out what's wrong with you, but my, sis my symptoms continued mm -hmm. to persist and get bigger and worse. Um, so I had moved here and, and taken a job that I wasn't even able to go to. Um, I was at the hospital probably every other day, and when they couldn't tell me what was wrong with me, I was jumping hospitals from mm -hmm. one to mm -hmm. another to another, driving two hours mm -hmm. trying to get um, some medical attention. Right, right. Because at that point, it had reached my heart, um, mm -hmm. and it turns into pericarditis. Um, it wasn't until I did you know, research and signed up for, um, it's called LLMD um, ILADS, uh, which is International Association of Lyme Disease Doctors. Okay. That I found a doctor in Savannah. Okay. Who I went to and finally got the diagnosis of chronic Lyme wow. disease. So this is a group of doctors that have, I guess, a specified training yes. and knowledge and skills in this area of dealing more sophisticated with sophisticated yeah, knowledge. More sophisticated knowledge. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so that doctor began treating me, and um, unfortunately, I ended up going into liver failure um, because. I was such a bad case, I needed so much medicine, but my body couldn't handle mm -hmm. it, the toxicity mm -hmm. of, of Lyme. So mm -hmm. I was in liver failure, and um, at that time I was working with um, a small business in the community who decided to do a fundraiser for mm -hmm. me, to mm -hmm. bring, not only to bring awareness, but to raise funds for right. Lyme disease care, because right. typically after the first four weeks it's not covered. Right, and it's it's... As with yours being chronic, I mean, we talk, you, you, you're you limited in your work, you're yes. limited in how much and how long and how often, and I mean, you're a mom, you know, you've got a son in college, yeah. bills have got to be paid, you've got to live, and um, yeah, everybody moved here to take care of me. Everybody moved. Your parents have moved down as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm their only child. And yeah. Oh, you're the baby. I, I am. I'm the, and, and me being sick, they, yes. they packed up and moved down here, and my yeah. son took a semester yeah. after college out of college and came here as yeah. well. Uh, well, I'm going to bounce back to that where you talked about um, the pastor that just kind of took Marcus in under his wings when he was younger when you first started going through and just we can I know you can look back at back at it now and see how God was preparing as you were talking about that I said you didn't even know what God was instilling in him to be able to help you out through this time right oh, now. He sounds like a phenomenal young man. He really is. And uh, you know, your parents, how, how has the family held up through all of this? Well, coincidentally, my mom had Lyme disease twice when I was younger. Really? She got the bullseye rash. Okay. So she had been working in her garden at the time, uh -huh. um, got a tick bite. The first time, um, she got the rash right away, mm -hmm. um, but she didn't know what it was, so right. she didn't get treated until she literally couldn't walk anymore. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So that's interesting. So with the symptoms that you had, I mean, and it's a plethora of symptoms because it begins to attack and break down other areas. Yes. It's not really, you know, localized, but did that, does your mom talking to her now, did it cross her mind in seeing some of your symptoms that this might have possibly been it or no, no. because wow. nobody talks about Lyme disease. Nobody talks about it. I mean, even myself, I mean, I've heard of it. Like I mentioned before, my son had an uh, incident with the tick and when I took him to the ER, I talked about it and said, you know, is this a concern? But I still didn't have the full knowledge of it. And for viewers that are watching, can you give a general definition of what Lyme disease is and what it does to the body. Absolutely. Well, in New England, it's an epidemic, and people always say to me down here, well, we don't have it here, but you do. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. In our Lyme disease support group, we have probably 25% of the people have contracted it here. Mm -hmm. um, it can attack your muscles, mm -hmm. attack your joints, attack you neurologically. Right. Um, 
Lyme disease injects, the tick injects spirochetes into your body Mm -hmm. that uh, their job is to invade Mm -hmm. your body, basically. Because it's it's parasitic parasitic, in nature. Yes, Yes. Yes. and that's what parasites do. And as you said earlier, it can lie dormant in your body up to 20 years, Mm -hmm. and it can take a stressful situation to bring it on, or perhaps um, your body's being exposed to like something through the flu shot, Mm -hmm. or you're on steroids, which is weakening Mm -hmm. your immune system. Mm -hmm. Now you're opening up the door for your Lyme to reactivate. Wow, wow. Um, So let's talk a little more about, you mentioned in this area it's really low key that you know we don't really have that issue here and which surprises me that people say that because we're surrounded by wooded area and marsh ticks. i mean and ticks, <laughs> yeah um you know so that's not something we need to sweep under the carpet yeah. and just in your getting involved and becoming an advocate and an organizer um your chapter i believe you said you have 42 42, 42 members, members in, and those are people that have county. just reached in beaufort county alone and i imagine with the knowledge getting out there with someone that may be dealing with symptoms or illness that has gone undiagnosed or mistreated, at least we can say, let's check this out. It may not be Lyme disease, but if it is, at least they now have something, a little bit of hope to say, let me look into this. And so what you're doing is you've gone through this experience. You have been tried in this and so now you're sharing your story and you have a support group for individuals that can come and talk to you and get support and let's talk a little bit about that and how viewers watching their hearts may be touched or moved to help with donations for that organization what is it that you all do and what are the necessity and the needs of the people well we meet the second tuesday of every month at freedom life church on 56 persimmon street Mm -hmm. Um, The group was formed for uh, patients who are going through Lyme disease or have went into remission, which I am thankfully in remission, thank you. Uh, Doctor in Charleston and the Mayo Clinic have really pushed me through. I didn't think I was going to make it, but God. But God. (laughs) Amen to that. Um, So we meet uh, the second Tuesday of every month, Mm -hmm. and I usually try to bring in a speaker who is someone um, who is in the Lyme community, Mm -hmm. um, whether it be a doctor or someone who has some alternative care options Um, patients and their families are allowed to come so we have a lot of family members who have children at home who are really struggling with Lyme disease and um, they come as well and we fellowship and we talk about the struggle and we look for the positive we look for people who are in remission yeah our speaker um, the last month that brings positivity to it gives them hope yeah our speaker the last month we met was uh, Princess Lyme warrior Sammy young 15 year old girl from um, Georgia uh-huh. who was literally on her deathbed mm. and through an experimental treatment um, she is now in remission and yes. it just it gives the families hope it gives it the, the people hope yeah. and um, how people can help us mm. is um, most of our treatments aren't covered right especially if you're doing yes. an alternative treatment mm-hmm. um, and there are so many single moms yes. and you know, working families right. that can't afford can. or the even treatment. working families, if it may be the father and he's the breadwinner, yes. that affects the whole family. It does. Absolutely. And so if anyone would, would like to provide a donation, yeah. it would go towards the families who need some Absolutely. Help right now. And we'll get all that information. It'll be there on the screen. We'll yes. get a contact number. Vanessa is the organizer. And, uh, you know, you can reach out. We'll have it on the website as well. Yes. Um, so we're going to close up here in just a second if um, there was anything that you would say to anyone that you um, have taken away from this what what could you offer them uh, in support or just an encouragement i would say if you are having symptoms that you cannot figure out and the doctors cannot figure out do not let it go advocate for yourself push for yourself i had to Otherwise, I would have still been diagnosed with this lupus that I never had. That you never had. And they would have been treating you for the wrong thing. Forever. And I would have never gotten better. I couldn't walk um, January of last year. Couldn't even get out of bed. And through the grace of God, through my church, through the people in the community and this group. And your will to never give up. And my will. I have found my way. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Vanessa, for joining us. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate it. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, we'll see you again. Bye-bye.